the newest version of bolt that is bolt v2 is actually incredible so all thanks to the cloud agent or let's say the cloud code integration and also all new bolt cloud you can go from idea to a full stack production ready app in minutes just by prompting and no you don't need any coding skills or technical knowledge so basically there are two important and major changes when it comes to bolt v2 and the first one is that it now uses cloud code or let's say cloud agent by default so every time you build an app with bolt.new it now uses cloud code and you might already know how cool and how great is cloud code when it comes to coding side of things and the second good thing is that now you no longer have to play around with third party services to incorporate authentication database file storage apis and all of the stuff so up until now, for example, let's say you're about to use a normal AI coding platform or wipe coding platform. The thing is that you will start by giving a prompt to this AI coding tool and you will tell that, okay, I want to build this kind of an app and I want to include following features. And now the AI agent will build the initial version or let's say the UI of the app. And after that, you will have to manually go through a lot of different platforms and set up database, authentication, file storage, etc. For example, for authentication, you will have to manually go ahead and sign up on Clerk, Superbase, Auth0, or Firebase, and then copy a bunch of code. It's like a, back, a lot of back and forth process to add authentication. And similar is the case for database. So you will have to go to Convex, Superbase, or Firebase, and then sign up for an account. Or let's say if you want to add storage, again, Convex, Superbase, or Firebase, right? So the problem here is that they did not really have any native integration, but again, a lot of tools actually have native Superbase integration, but even then, there's some kind of friction involved, right? I know that's what Bolt V2 completely eliminates. Now, if you want to build a full stack app and if you want to include authentication, database, storage, or any other features, you no longer have to even sign up on any of these platforms. Bolt V2 will itself take care of everything. So all you gotta do is to just explain what kind of app you want to build and Bolt itself will actually create a database, implement authentication, storage, and Bolt V2 will itself take care of everything and add that to your app without even leaving this Bolt interface right here. So that is the cool thing. So earlier, you'll have to go to Superbase, set up the project, come back. I mean, it's a lot of work, right? So that's what different when it comes to newest Bolt V2. And today in this video, just as to demonstrate how we can go from idea to a full stack app in minutes, I'll be using the newest version of Bolt and specifically Cloud Agent. And I'll start by giving a simple prompt, something like this. And it says build a full stack web app called Feedback Hub where users can log in and post feature requests or bug reports for SaaS products. And each post should include a title, description and a category. Other users can view all the feedback on a public board and upvote items they support. Okay, so this is basically the core app that I want to build. And here I have given a detailed and elaborative prompt. And if you do want to build cool apps, SaaS or anything using AI, all you have to do is to click the link in the description below and head over to all new bolt.new and you can sign up for a new account. And first of all, this right here is the prompt I'll give. And again, I'll keep it as cloud agent and I'll click on this build now button right here. And now as soon as I click on the send button, as you can see, Bolt says it's thinking. So it says I'll build feedback hub a full stack feedback management system with authentication, voting and sorting features. And right now it is setting up the database schema with tables for feedback and votes. So even before it actually started working on the UI, it is now creating the database table and making sure the schema is in check. So it is now applying the database migration. And after that, if you head over to the database section of your app, you'll be able to find all the tables created. All right. So after that, it will implement Bolt database authentication system. So obviously user sign up and then create authentication components, build feedback form component for submitting new items, then create feedback board, design the main app and also run a build to verify everything works. So it will take some time. So all you have to do is to just wait till it is done and I'll see you afterwards. So it took about two to three minutes for Bolt to create the initial version of the app. And this right here is the app. And as you can see, Bolt has implemented pretty much everything that was outlined in the plan. And now it says feedback hub is complete and ready to use. I have built a full stack feedback management system where users can share feedback or let's say feature request and bug reports. And now the thing is that if I head over to and I click on this option right here, that says database. Okay. So here I have database. And as you can see here, we already have two tables. So one for feedback and the other for votes. And right now, of course, the tables are empty. But as you can see, Bolt itself has actually went ahead and created the database and also all these tables. And as you can see, here we have everything ready. And not just that, it has even added authentication as well. Okay, so that's the cool thing. And next up, just, just to make sure everything works, I'll click on the sign in button and let's try to sign up for a new account. I'll say, okay, let me make sure that email verification is disabled. 
Uh, okay, I love new user sign up. Okay, confirm email is disabled, so that's good. And now I can enter, let's say, a dummy email, a password, and let's see what happens. Okay, so there you go. It seems like I'm now logged in and I can find a sign out button. And now that I'm logged in, I can now find the new feedback button. And now if I click on this database button and if I go to user management, I should hopefully find the new user. And there you go. Here we have the newly created user account. And every time a new user signs up on your platform, you can head over to the user management section and you'll be able to find the complete information in here. Okay, so next step to make sure everything works. So as you can see right now, we don't really have any rows in these tables, right? both feedback and votes are empty. Next up, let's just try to create one. And first of all, you have two options that is feature request and bug report. So in this case, let's say feature request, let's say Zapier integration. It would be great if you could add Zapier integration to the app to automate a lot of stuff. So a basic one, and now I'll click on submit feedback. Okay, there you go. Here we have the feedback added. And if I head over to the database now, and if I go to feedback, there you go. Here we have the same, right? All right, so that, that actually works, right? And again, here we have the upvote option. So I can upvote my own, let's say feedback. And as you can see here, it says one. And if I open the votes table, there you go. The same is marked as well. And now the thing is that other people will be able to, let's say upvote our feedback or let's say bug reports or whatever. And just as to make sure if that works, I'll try to sign out from this account. Okay, and now I'll sign in and again, okay. So I'm unable to upvote this particular feedback that I currently have on the platform because I'm not logged in. Okay. In which case I'll try to sign up for another account. Let's say astro2 at the rate astro.com and the password and I'll sign up. Okay. And now that I'm logged in, this right here is a feedback that other person has created. And now I'm able to upvote the same. And again, even if I refresh, everything is consistent and persistent. And if I want to, I can now, let's say, post some random gibberish and there you go it is also posted and if i go to database everything is updated in real time okay so the basic functionality of the app that we asked for is indeed working and in just a single prompt bolt actually built out the entire thing it took care of the front end the back end tables databases authentication and again if you head over to and click on this database option now you'll be able to find file storage option so if you want to incorporate any sort of file storage you can do that well, just as to, let's say, to make things interesting and also to make use of the file storage feature, I'll modify, I mean, I'll ask Bolt to modify the app such that every time the user is prompted to, let's say, create a new feedback, we also want to include, let's say, a file upload feature that allows the user to, let's say, upload an image and we want to store the same, okay? So that is the functionality that I want to implement. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and give a follow-up prompt. So I'll say, next step, every time the user is about to create a new feedback or let's say bug report, we should give the option for the users to upload a file, preferably images, and we need to store the same and display the same as well. Okay, and now I'll click on the send button and let's wait for it. So basically I want to add a feature of letting users to upload images or files. And now that Bolt natively supports file storage options, it will automatically take care of everything. And it says I'll add image upload functionality to the feedback system and use Bolt database storage, okay? So it will set up database storage bucket. Okay, update database schema, add image upload, display uploaded image in feedback card component. All right, so let's wait for it. All right, so seems like that part is also implemented. So it says image upload functionality is complete. Users can now upload or attach images when creating feedback or bug reports. The system supports JPEG, PNG, GIF and WebV formats. Okay, so images are stored securely in Bolt database storage. Okay, let's give it a shot. So I'll click on new feedback, open AI integration. Please add open AI as a API provider. Okay, just some random content. And now as you can see here, we have the option to let's say upload an image. And for the time being, I'll take a screenshot of our app itself and we'll try to upload that image. So let's see, here we have the screenshot. Okay, there you go. The same is attached. And as soon as I click on the submit feedback button, and there you go, as you can see, the same is posted in here and even the image is now added and made visible in here. And again, we also have filter options as well. Okay, cool. And now if I head over to the database again and if I go to file storage, there you go. Here we now have a folder called or a bucket called as feedback images 
and all the files are actually stored within this feedback images bucket so if i click on open image in a new tab there you go it is now stored and again one more thing to keep in mind is that bolt cloud is still using superbase under the hood but it's just that bolt will take care of all the heavy lifting for you you don't have to sign up on superbase or go through any configuration process bolt will internally do everything so as you can see here we have that implemented as well and next step in a similar fashion if you want to add any new features to the app that you're working on you can simply give a follow -up prompt to bolt and ask it to implement the same and it will gladly do it for you and next step for editing your app you also have one more tool within bolt that is if you click on this select option right here you will be able to highlight and select individual elements within the page for example let's say this button right here and next step let's just say i want to make some changes to this button alone well i can simply select that button and now as you can see the button is selected and maybe i can select let's say a different element for example the nav bar which is a header component and there you go and next step let's just say i want to make some changes for example let's say i want to change the color of this button from blue to let's say green okay please change the background color of the button to green and now all i gotta do is to hit enter and now bolt will make targeted edits to the selected element only so let's wait for it and in the meantime if you click on settings option right here or let's say if you go to project settings you'll be able to configure a lot of project related settings like the agent that you want to use of course we are using cloud agent whether you want to make it a private secret or public project and once you publish your app you can actually connect a domain and also get access to analytics which i'll show you in a bit and again here we have the database here we have the logs let's see okay so functions authentication logs okay so you can access all these logs and now here we have authentication related settings then here we have server functions and if you want to store any environment variables or secrets you can store that up in here for example let's say you want to add a open AI api key well you can just type it in here enter the value and click on create secret and the same will be saved as an environment variable there you go next up we have user management file storage knowledge backups so you can actually go ahead and let's say configure all these settings and there you go as you can see the feedback button is now changed to green and now building apps and all that is cool right okay cool bolt can take care of let's say adding a database authentication pretty much everything but how about deploying the app well it's pretty simple too towards the top you can find a publish button and if i click on the same it says your app is not published yet and if i click on this publish button it will now send a prompt saying publish this application and bolt itself will publish and deploy the app and make it live on the internet in just a couple of seconds and give you a live url as well so there you go it says publishing your site this will just take a moment so let's wait for it and again after publishing the app okay it's already done and this right here is the address of our app and now anyone can access this particular url and get access to your app and there you go here we have it and let's just try to sign up or let's just sign in to the existing account that we already had there you go okay i'm now logged in and i can find all the uh, feature requests or bug reports and i can upvote them i can remove upvote i can post a new feedback i can do pretty much everything in here okay and the even cooler thing is that you can even publish or let's say connect your own custom domain so here we have an option that says custom domain and if you already own a domain you can click on this option that says add a domain you own or you can even buy a new domain and after that you can just enter your domain name here and do the dns verification stuff and once that's done you can make your app live in your own custom domain or a subdomain so that's also one feature you get within bolt and if i move over to the analytics tab i'll be able to find all the data related to our project like the number of visitors the resource consumption and usage and everything else in here so there you go unique visitors page use bandwidth top pages location sources everything is in here and if you want to go one step further you can click on this github icon right here and connect to your github account and create a repository and transfer this project to your own custom let's say github repo as well so that's also there so if you want the code to live in your github account you can do that as well so that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in today's video so now all thanks to bolt cloud and cloud agent integration in bolt.new the newest version of it bolt v2 it's incredibly easy and super simple to get started and create a full stack app so you can just give a prompt and just explain the features that you want and bolt will itself take care of implementing all the technical stuff like database authentication and everything you just have to explain what kind of features you want and let bolt do the heavy lifting for you it will create the database add tables rls policies and then 
implement authentication file storage api functions server functions whatever that is bolt will take care of it and now that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in today's video and now if you want to build an app for yourself using bolt all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below head over to bolt.new sign up for a new account and you can start using the same right away and now i hope you guys found this video useful if yes make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one